greetings and thank you for giving us this opportunity to come to you and spend a few moments in the Word and in prayer. This week we are considering this thought about God becoming a man. What are the different aspects that went into this whole process of God becoming a man and understanding each step in this process? Today I would like us to think about the humble habitation in which this God who became man engaged in while here on earth. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 7 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. The Apostle Paul in this scripture in Philippians is saying, the one who was in the form of God chose to come in the form of man. And not only did he come in the form of man, but he completely submitted himself to humanity. He walked as a man and he walked in as a bond servant in complete submission, in complete submission to the Father God. So here's the third aspect of this whole process of God becoming a man, his humble habitation, that God, the eternal word who became a man, not only came through miraculous conception, not only took on human form in the incarnation, but he became a bond servant, meaning he lived in complete submission and in complete ob obedience and total surrender to the Father. And so he was referred to as the Son of God. Just as a son is in submission to the Father, even so the eternal word was co-equal with the Father in the form of God. But as in the form of man, he walked as a bond servant, completely submitted to the Father. Now why was there a need of this? Because the first man, Adam, whom the Bible refers to as a son of God in Luke chapter 3, verse 38, that first man did not walk in submission to the Father. And so Paul explains this to us in Romans chapter 5. He says, the first man, Adam, was disobedient. And because of his disobedience, he plunged the entire human race, everyone who came after him, into a place of servitude to sin, Satan and death. Here comes another man. He walks in complete obedience to the Father, unlike the first Adam. He walks as a bond servant. He walks as the Son of God, but in complete submission. And Paul mentions in Romans 5 that through his obedience, he made abounding grace, unlimited grace, and the gift of righteousness abound towards us. So one man, by his disobedience, brought us into a place of condemnation and judgment. Christ, through his life of obedience, being a bond servant, put us in a place of righteousness and abounding grace before God. And that's why it was necessary for him to live in this humble habitation as a born servant, as a son of God. Let's worship Jesus for that. Lord Jesus, we worship you for what you did for us 2,000 years ago, coming into this world, walking as a born servant to the Father, as a son to the Father, so that we could be brought into a place of righteousness and grace. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.